All right, I get, I get the pleasure to have the last presentation of the seminar, and that gives me the opportunity to find out a little bit from you how how did we do? Did did it, all of you at least? And let me see or some hands on if you actually received at least one gem of information that you're going to take back with you, think about and implement in your flight school or in your training. Well, that, that's absolutely wonderful to see, and that was the goal of what we're doing here. We're trying to provide value to you that you can take back and, and actually make improvements at your flight school, do things maybe a little bit differently. Hopefully you've had the opportunity to learn from one another, and, uh, and it, it's just it's thrilling for me to see all of you here, have a chance to meet and talk with you. Um, teaching is really our passion. And when Brian came to me and proposed doing this, just I, it seems to me like it was about three or four months ago when we started uh, looking at the possibility of doing this symposium. And I told Brian, I said, you know, it's a wonderful idea. Maybe we should think about it next year. It's awfully close. How are we going to get the people? How are we going to get the vendors here? And how are we going to be able to put something like this on in that short a period of time? And then I looked at Brian and I, I realized, you know, since we brought him on board, everything that he's undertaken, everything that he's started, he's put such passion and effort into it that I, I didn't want to express too many doubts. So I, I said, well, Brian, go out, talk to some of the flight schools, talk to some of the vendors, see if you can generate enough excitement where you believe that you're going to be able to do it. And he went off, he did that, he came back and said, I think we can do this, and I think we can do it in a big way and a good way that will provide a lot of value for those that attend, and we'll just do better and better in the years that come. Because we're not thinking about this as just this year, we're thinking about it far into the future as providing a forum for flight schools to be able to come, share information, take home gems of wisdom, and hopefully learn also a little bit about what we're doing at King Schools and make sure that you have all of the information on what's available to you in terms of product and in terms of help that we can provide. And Brian is a wonderful resource for you all. If you haven't heard of something called a concierge service, uh, I can tell you right now that you have an amazing resource in Brian and his uh, his resources that he has in his department, but mostly from his experience in, in running and, and operating flight schools and 141 programs, working with uh, VA benefits, working with financing, all of those things. And he can be a great resource to you. And that's why we called it the concierge service, because he and his team are standing by to help you if there's any way that we can help, recognizing that you're the experts in your field, but also that maybe we can bring something to the table to help you in your school. So please take advantage of that. One of the things that we've announced is that next year is 50 years of King Schools. And John and Martha, having started the, the uh, company 50 years ago, have been celebrated so much throughout the years. But one of the things that is a remarkable achievement is 50 years in business. And any company that's been around for 50 years has been doing something right. And they've been doing it right over time. And more important than that, I think any company that's around 50 years after they started is a learning company. And King Schools is a learning company. We want to make sure that we listen to your feedback and we respond to your feedback. So after 50 years, really I can say we're just getting started. And one of our challenges in celebrating 50 years is it, it starts to sound like a retirement celebration. 50 years, oh my God, you know, they must be done. But really, 50 years, we're just getting started. And as you can see with John and Martha in their presentations today, they're really just getting started too in many ways in their contributions that they'll continue to make to the aviation community. And we're all looking forward to that. But what really drives us at King Schools is helping to make sure that our customers succeed. And whether that those customers are flight schools like yourselves or when we go direct to consumer, we're invested in the success of our customers. We want to be good partners. And good partners look out for each other and take care of each other. So one of the things that I want you to know is that we think of ourselves as beginners, regardless of 50 years. We have a beginner's mind. And in a beginner's mind, you may have heard, there's many opportunities, there's many possibilities. In an expert's mind, there's few. And we want to be 
in the beginner's mind state. So we're, we're open to your feedback. I'd love to hear from you directly or through Brian or what have you. Um, give us your feedback. But what I really want to talk to you about today is a little bit more on the technology side and give you a glimpse into what's going on at King Schools and in particular about a new product that we have out, which is our, our test prep app. So I'm going to get to that in a little bit of a roundabout way. And where I'm going to start is back at the beginning and talk a little bit about the progression of technology because we can learn a lot from looking backwards and what's important as we look to the future. So let's take a little look at uh, technology and where we started and where we're going. So if you look back, and some of you may even remember those days, some of you may still have some VHS tapes around from King Schools, but that's really where we started. We started with video on TV, and at that time, that was new. It was brand new to be able to go and get a VHS tape and plug it into a machine and watch your own TV show on demand on your time frame. So John and Martha were able to get involved very, very earlier, early in that uh, possibility. And you will have heard John say earlier that at first he didn't believe that their presence would work on VHS tape. But as it turned out, it was a game changer for the company. And so we really started out with video on a TV. There's some, there's some drawbacks to that. If you'd like to study somewhere other than where you happen to have your VCR and your TV, it's really not open to you, right? You gotta drag the VCR and TV around to the, wherever you're going. It, it really looks awkward on an airplane when you're sitting there with a v, VHS and a TV on your lap. So that didn't work out very well. The other part about it is there was no interactivity. And uh, so you didn't have the ability to display and answer questions and get results. So that was really the next step, which was computer installed programs. And computer installed programs, they really were a game changer in many ways. Because once you've installed the program on the computer, it's there, it's resident, it's fast, and, um, and it has the ability for interactivity. So that was the next big step for King Schools, was having that interactivity, the ability to ask questions, grade questions, do sample tests, all those things came about when we moved to computer installed programs. So that was really what it was about, interactivity. There were some big drawbacks to it in, in the early days because we were on computers when computers were barely able to play back video. I mean, they were just at the, at the very beginning. And we had to install a lot of software onto the computer in order to be able to enable that computer to play the video. And unfortunately, at that time, there were many interdependencies on the computer. We had, we had a lot of support uh, nightmares. And we, we actually had a staff of about five support people that were taking calls all day long and solving problems, getting into the computers, removing drivers, installing this, installing that. So it was, it was a lot of trouble, but it was a great step because that interactivity really made a big difference in the ability to teach and to check and make sure that the learner had acquired the knowledge through testing. So that, that was a big thing, early 2000s and so on. We were installing our, our software onto computers. Some of those computers could be dragged around. The laptops were a little bigger at that time. But once you had it installed, the nice thing is you didn't need to be connected to anything. So you could take, wherever you could take your computer, you could take our courses. Following that, of course, came the web. And the web was another game changer for us and really opened up some new capabilities. And primarily, it gave us the ability to put a library of courses right on the customer's computer. And that's what we have today. That's what we're used to. You just log in. You see all the courses you want or that you, you have in your library. You select one. You play it and go, go through the course. So, th so that's, we're, we're at, this, uh, at this point today still on the web browser. Um, the courses can be updated automatically. So whenever we make a change, we get customer feedback about a question, we make a change, that new question is available to all of our customers immediately. There's, there's no upgrading the computer software or so on. You have immediate, uh, immediate changes, immediate updates, and so on. The biggest uh, problem that it has is that it requires an internet connection. And those internet connections can be slow. And has anybody ever had a problem where they went to a website and you know, and suddenly it, 
it wasn't very responsive. I, I know I have and, you know, still have that problem all the time. So the reliability of the connection is a little bit of a, little bit of a problem. And like I say, we're still here today. This is, all of our courses are sold and, and initially installed as web-based courses. But we're going past that. And that's what I'm really here to talk to you about is the importance and the advantages of moving to an app-based training environment as opposed to a web-based training environment. So apps, really, apps are like the $6 million man. Does anybody remember the $6 million man? Right? The $6 million man was great. It was like, you know, you take, a, you take this human and you make them better than they ever were before. So that, that's my analogy here. Six million dollar man, gentlemen, we can rebuild him. Better, faster, stronger, easier to use, work online, offline. The, the apps really are a game changer for your customers. So we really need to ensure that you're aware so that you can make sure that, that the customers who have a choice today on using the web-based version or the app version we really want them to choose the app version because we think that the app is going to provide a better customer experience. They're going to be more satisfied and they're going to have some, some additional options beyond the web. So it's really, it's accessed from any mobile device. So it doesn't matter, iPhone, iPad, um, whatever you have with you, you can easily switch back and forth between them because on the back end, we've built a mechanism which syncs up your progress across those apps. So you can switch from your web browser to an iPhone app, to an iPad app, and you'll always have your current status and what the questions that you've answered correctly, the ones you've answered incorrectly, will just follow you wherever you go. And so you have access from any mobile device. It's available online or offline. Now that's the important thing because if you think back to when we were installing on computers, we had the ability, as long as you had that computer with you, you didn't have to be connected to anything to do your training, right? When we went to the web, we lost that aspect. We gained a lot, but we lost the ability to study when you're not connected to the internet. So we had a lot of customers that, that gave us feedback and said, that's great, but you know, I'm on the airplane and I travel a lot and, and I want to do my test prep and I want to do my knowledge uh, acquisition and, and training while I'm, while I'm flying. And we didn't really have an answer for, for that until we moved to the apps. So the apps have all the advantages of that fully installed program where you don't have to be connected to the internet but it doesn't have all of the hassles because apps just work. There's not a lot of dependencies. There's no question when you install an app on your mobile device, it's just going to work. And we're, we still don't have anybody any longer in our tech support department that's just sitting there answering and solving computer problems. You don't have to do it. The apps just work. So that, that's the great thing. So unlike computer installed, you can use as many different devices as you want and it just syncs across. So apps are really game changers for your customers. The entire learning experience now with King School's products, whether you're using the Cessna flight training system or you're using the King uh, products, the entire learning experience can be accessed through apps. And so that includes the ground school lessons where you have the Cessna companion app the King School's Ground School Companion app allows you to take those, take all of your knowledge training, all of your lessons, and then our new app is the Test Prep app. And that's really what I, what I want to spend a little bit of time with today. So just to, to recap, the Cessna Companion is the way that your customers can access the Cessna training on the app with a dedicated application that's fast, it's responsive, and, uh, and just work seamlessly for the customer. No internet connection required. So you can study anywhere, you get the knowledge and flying previews, the phase proficiency checklists, all of that. Now, like I said before, they can still just go and have all of that available to them through a web browser. That still is an option. But really, you should be recommending to them 
to use the app for all the reasons that I indicated. It's fast, it's, uh, it's easy to use. When you go page to page, it's not going out making a request on the internet to get back the next page. It's there immediately. So it's really the better way to go. So you can, you can start with your knowledge training and your phase proficiency checklist and all right in the app. On the, if you're using the King products, we have the King Ground Schools Companion app, and that works with all the King Schools video courses, plus the Cessna Flight Training System courses after you get done with the Private and Instrument. The Private and Instrument, as you probably know, are a little bit different format of a course. Beyond that, the rest of them, the commercial, CFI, I, and so on, those, those are all it, video courses, and you can access those video courses through the King Companion app. So you watch a video, you confirm your understanding with questions, and you can switch seamlessly between your iPad, iPhone, and so on. So the, the recommendation is that they go through and mentioned VIP learning. The, the V stands for, um, for video courses. So they're watching the, they're watching the video lessons as, you, as they go through the course, and they're confirming their knowledge with questions right on their app. Now, once you've completed all of the all of the training, and you're really you're getting ready to go and take that test, then that's the time to use the new King Schools Test Prep app, and that will work whether you're whether you're studying in the Cessna training system, say the private pilot course, or you're using the King private pilot ground school and test prep course. It doesn't matter because it's really based now and it's focusing in on the database of questions and taking the customers through that database of questions different ways in order to really solidify all the knowledge that they've been working on in a way that allows them to answer FAA questions. Because we all know there's, there's having the knowledge and then there's, there's being able to look at a question and, and get an answer. And it, that takes a little bit of practice sometimes, right? So we want to make sure that our customers have the opportunity to get a top score on their FAA exams. And really to do that, you need to go and do some drilling and practicing. So you need to work with the interactive questions and, and make sure that you're able to answer the questions in the style that the FAA asked them on the test. And that's what this is all about. And you know, we've had this capability for a while on the web-based version, but I have to say that it's a completely different experience when you're using the app. It's very quick. You can do it anywhere you have your iPhone. The display is super easy to use. Um, it's structured well. And I'm going to walk you through a little bit of a demo to show you how, how it works, and you can see what you think. But, uh, but our feeling is that when you buy into the Cessna training system or you, you buy the King Schools ground school and test prep courses, that we supply the customer everything that they need. They don't need to go out and buy other test prep or buy books or red books or any, anything else. Everything is right there that they need to get a top score on their FAA exams. So the test prep companion app, it has question review, which is FAA style questions, ABC, including explanations. It has flashcards, which give you just the question, and you have to formulate the answer, flip the card, and check typical flashcards. And it has FAA practice tests to then really check and make sure that you're ready to go take the FAA knowledge exam. There's iOS and Android support. And like I say, your customers really don't need anything else. So let's, let's take a quick look. And we're going to hook up my iPhone. Can you hang on to that for one second? I'll be right back. I need my the dongle that I threw in my briefcase. Okay. Here we go. The one thing they told me when I started in the technology world in, in talking about our product roadmaps and so on was uh, never give a live demo. I never listened to that advice. Most of the time it's worked out well, and hopefully it will this time. 
So let's, uh, it's on. Okay. So we just need to switch. Oh, okay. I, d I don't have the monitors here. So uh, let me, I'm going to come down here and just make sure that I can see what's going on. Okay. So this is, this is our test prep app right here. And it's running on my iPhone. And you can see you start out with a, a list of the courses that you have. And that includes, you know, even down here at the bottom, if I scroll on down, here's the Cessna uh, Sport Private Pilot course. So it works just fine with that instrument rating course. You can see there's a whole list of courses. So basically all of the uh, King Schools and Cessna courses that are preparing you for a written exam test are available in this app. And I've just logged in with my normal credentials. And as a result, it's loaded all of the courses that I have in my iLearn account. So here's the Sport Private Pilot. And you'll see that I have flashcards, question review, and practice exams. And then there's a search where I can search for questions on any particular topic. And, and along the bottom here, there's not graded, needs review, and got this. For the question review, there's unanswered, incorrect, and correct. And for the practice exams, we have not started, not passed, and passed. So I'm going to just go through each of these real quick. And for flashcards, let's just look at some not graded flashcards. And what I see at the top is the entire deck of flashcards. And then down below, it's broken up into topics. So we have aerodynamics, flight instruments, sectional charts, and so on. So I'll just go ahead and select one of these. We'll use flight instruments. And I'll select all. So here I get a question about, uh, looks like about an attitude indicator. And it's asking me the proper adjustment to make on the attitude indicator during flight is to align the what? This so now I think about it and I go, gosh darn it, I'm not sure, but I'm going to go ahead and flip the card, see what it says. And it says the miniature airplane to the horizon bar. Well, that sounds right to me. So, but it, if I'm concerned about whether or not that, you know, why that's the right answer, then I can show the explanation. And every question, every flashcard has an explanation. So basically, I can work my way through this by saying, I've got this or I need to review here at the bottom. So I'm going to go ahead and tap on, got this, I got that one down. And I get the next question, glass cockpit, glass cockpit aircraft refer to what? And then the other side, it says aircraft with both digital and a limited number of analog instruments. Once again, explanation and so on. And I can say, well, I had trouble with that. It needs review. And then that puts it in that card into a stack that I need to review later. So basically, I can just work through the flashcards this way. And, um, you know, as a, as a flight instructor, I'm using this now when I'm doing flight reviews, right? Because there's a section down here, and, and we're required to... Uh, to talk about federal aviation regulations, right? So I can go down here and I can say uh, federal aviation regulations. Well, look, let's look at all of those. And I can actually use this to prompt and work with a, a customer on going through flashcards and reviewing some of the regulations. So it makes it very easy for me as a flight instructor to have, uh, you know, to instead of thinking up questions, to, to be able to just go through some flashcards in the review of, uh, of the federal aviation regulations. Okay. So that, that's the flashcards. And you'll see at the top, there's the shuffle uh, button as well. So the, the cards will come in the same order every time unless you click shuffle, in which case they'll come in random order. Now I'm going back to the main screen here. And let's take a look at question review, and we'll see how that's different. If I want to review questions that I have answered incorrectly, there's an option for that right in the middle here. So incorrect, I currently out of the 800, I have 841 unanswered. I'm not very far along here. And I have three that are incorrect. So I'll go ahead and click on the incorrect in the question review. And then once again, I can look at all of those. There's only, uh, there's only a few of them, but I can go through, I can shuffle, I can mark. And let's say I want to go to aerodynamics. I can look at the unanswered questions there and go through them one at a time, okay? And I have the ability, you'll notice right here, mark. So I have the ability to mark that question so that I want to review it later. And that status will get propagated through our servers through the ne next chance if I'm not connected to the Internet, which I'm not right now, then the next time I am connected to the Internet, all those question answer statuses will get synced up with our servers. And 
then they'll be available if you access the same question review from a web browser or from, uh, from a different device, say I switch to my iPad, I'll have exactly the same status. Everything that I've marked will be available. Okay, so the last one is the practice exams. And this is my practice exam screen. I have practice exam one that I started. I got a whopping 3.3%. Uh, I guess I need to work on this a little bit. Um, I can start new view results. We have practice exam two and three, and that's what we use in order to issue a endorsement to take the practical test, is, is passing with 70% or better the three curated practice exams. So those are ones where we've closely picked the questions in order to the best of our knowledge match the FAA tests that are currently being given. Then the last one is unlimited randomly generated exams. So that one will go out and randomly pull questions in specific categories in order to build an, an exam that will be different every time you take it. So I'm going to go ahead and start a new random exam. And you'll see it comes up with the ability to select a question. I don't get immediate feedback, but I can, I can click the question and then next question, click an answer, next question. Now you can tell I'm not even reading this. I probably will do better than I would if I were reading it, but I'm going to go ahead and select a set of them. So I haven't completed it, but when I have completed it, I have the ability to, to finish it. And you'll see I have other options here for suspend, review, mark the question for later review, and so on. So it's a lot like taking the actual FAA exam. You'll find all of those options in the PSI uh, version of the test as well. When I'm done, I click Finish. And then I get a, a status or a report card of, of how I did on my test. And I can see by category what questions I was asked and, and how I did. So for instance, aerodynamics. Um, doesn't appear that I did very well. Let's look at the exam details. And it, it shows here the ones that I got correct have the, the check marks, and then the X's are incorrect. And I can go through and select some set of questions and say, let's go ahead and right up here, I can review the questions and then go back in, look at the correct choices, the incorrect choices, and also the explanation to see um, to see how I should have arrived at the correct question answer. Okay, so that's that's pretty much uh, what we have available. So really, this this is the part when we talk about VIP is the interactive questions and then the practice and recall. So this is the practice and recall part where they can go through and just make sure that they're able to answer questions in each category, review the questions that they're having trouble with, get good explanations, and rinse and repeat until they're, they're ready for the exam. So we think between flashcards, question review, and practice exams that all of our customers and your customers will be able to take all that knowledge that they acquired by going through the course and then apply it to, a pre to a, their knowledge exam and then and be able to get a high score. Okay, so that's, that's our new newest app. And with that app now, we do have the ability to do everything on an app from learning to, um, to interactive questions and to, to practice and recall. They can go all the way through and that app will just make it so easy to do and the, with the ability to study anywhere on an airplane, wherever they happen to be. Okay, let's go back. So how has it been doing? Uh, we've gotten some great customer reviews already on the test prep app, and we think that they'll continue to come in. The biggest challenge that we have is that everybody is so used to accessing our learning content and, and test preparation on the web, sometimes it's hard to get the folks to discover the app opportunity and to use the apps, and that's where, where you folks can come in with your customers at least, improve their experience by making sure that they're using the apps as opposed to the web experience. So, so this one, I, I love these reviews, uh, just illustrates the quality of King Schools from their free practice exams and now these. I definitely feel like I'll be prepared for my written exam. 
Simple interface, yet intuitive. This will help me memorize those tough FAA questions for my written exam. Thanks, John and Martha. And we've ended up with a, a 4.2 rating so far. And all the courses are, are supported. You know, it's a lot of work uh, to maintain these FAA question databases, but it's, it's really worthwhile because it, it gives our customers the opportunity to test their knowledge. It's one thing to go through and study and study and study, but at one point you have to ask yourself, what, what have I retained? You know, what, where do I still need to go back over again and review something? And, uh, and that's really what these testing databases give us the opportunity to provide for our customers. We probably have o over 50,000 questions that we're maintaining right now through the databases from private all the way through ATP and including now A&P with the new program that Brian was talking about and drone courses as well. So apps are a game changer for instructors as well. As I mentioned, I think that the test prep companion app is great for instructors to use in order to quiz students, work with students, and maybe ask their students even to make sure you mark those questions that are in areas that you're having difficulty with so that when you come back in, we can review your marked questions and I can help you to understand that particular bit of knowledge that you might be missing. So I think it's, they're a game changer for instructors in many ways too. The other one that I just want to briefly mention, if you're using CTA today and your flight instructors are not using the CTA companion app, they really should be. Because the CTA companion app takes what's available in the CTA in terms of getting your, um, your lesson plan for the day, and grading the, the uh, customer on their performance, it takes what's rather, I, I, I would say it's, it's not super easy going through the web-based interface, and it simplifies it and makes it super easy for a flight instructor to do even if they're offline, sitting in the airplane with their uh, student after a flight, and they're going through their debrief, their learner-centered grading and talking about things, and it's so easy to just tap, 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 and if you're using electronic signature, acquire those signatures right at that moment, click save, you're done. Moving on to the next. There's nothing, there's no, let's go to this special computer that's set up in order for me to log flights or what have you. They, they can do it right on their iPad. Super efficient. I really recommend that if you haven't looked into it, to take a look at it and uh, use it as a way to ensure, especially if you're a 141 program, Brian talks about the one time uh, that, that he was asked on the ramp by an FAA representative uh, working for an, a Part 141 flight school for his lesson plan for the lesson he was going out to fly, which there was the one time in his entire career teaching that he didn't have that lesson plan with him, and it created some, some difficulties. The great thing about this app is that you'll always have your lesson plans with you because they're right there in the, in the app, in the CTA app. So you can show, this is what we're doing today, here's the lesson plan, here's the, the scenarios, here's the planned accomplishments, and so on. So the instructors using that test prep app really, or, or all these apps, gives them the ability with the flashcard app and then with the uh, tracking companion app to be able to be more efficient in delivering flight instruction. So the, the course tracking app runs on an iPad or iPhone. You can conduct, conduct your log and log your training sessions. You can schedule future sessions. If you want to use the scheduling part, you may be using something else for scheduling. But at least from the instructor's point of view, they can maintain a schedule when they're planning to fly with that, with that particular student next. And it syncs all of those training sessions with the CTA, just like they had gone to the web browser and recorded that, that session. It's just that you can record it when you're offline. The next time you're connected, it'll just send those uh, recorded training sessions right to the CTA where they'll be, of course, kept for your records. I, I have just one other quick thing before I wrap up. Um, a new product that we've come out with that may be useful for you in order to get prospects excited about learning to fly. So if you have folks coming to your school and they're like, oh, I'm not sure I could do it and uh, flying might be too hard for me and so on, there's a, there's a new video that you can point them to and it's called Your First Flying Lesson. 
and it basically, I have the opportunity, which I was honored to do, to uh, take a new prospect on a flight from Montgomery Field right here over to Catalina Island and be able to explain along the way the fundamentals of the flight controls, of the control surfaces, of flying, of turns, um, climbs, turns, uh, descents, and approaching and landing at Catalina. The idea is to, is to let them know that learning to fly is something that anybody can do. You don't have to have special skills, special know-how. Anybody can learn to fly, and the concepts are easy to understand if they're explained well to the student. So the idea is that they come away having seen a beautiful flight, and hopefully with the sense that it's something that they can do. And so it may help you if they're on the fence about learning to fly. Uh, it's a free course. It's available on YouTube or directly from King Schools, along with about uh, 30 or 40 other free courses and free course segments that we have between YouTube and free courses that are available on King Schools to, uh, to help your students with individual uh, issues that they may have. So I wanted to point that out. I wanted to thank you for everything that you do for flight training and, and helping to fill the need for pilots. Uh, we share your passion and we're definitely privileged to play a role in helping you teach your learning pilots. Um, give us feedback, let us know how we're doing. We hope that this event was a great event for you and that you're taking home even more than that one uh, gem of wisdom that everybody raised their hand for. And we'll get a lot out of it and we'll come back next year. So thank you so much and uh, hope we see many of you over for a tour of King Schools.